Hi everybody, it's Donnell McAdams and my daughter Megan again. And we are here to teach you a little bit more how to do your, use your mini templates. Now the title on the handout, if you got that, it's on the Westerly by Me page. It's over on the Sew Study page. And it's also on my website, sobizmarion.com. And you might wanna take a few minutes and get on over there and get the handout. There are six pages. I have a lot of diagrams, and I um, know that it would help you to understand what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna be changing that title a bit. That was what I was gonna do on May 2nd, and we ended up changing that date and everything. And so we just decided that we would um, do this this time, but I forgot to change the title. So after the class, I'll get that changed. If you want to reprint the first page, you'll have it then so it's all together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you this is a simple, most everybody already knows how to do the um, piecing and things. And so I've just got a little simple diagram here of a four patch. that you can put together. I have got the requirements of the fabrics, the sizes of the blocks, and most of you know how to do that. So this is the information here that you would put that together with. So I'm gonna move that to the side and I'm gonna show you my four patch. Um, it's actually a nine patch and then we've got four patches here in it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna quilt this whole inside because the focus of today is to show you how we can use our templates to create um, not only a border on here, but one that we use two different templates to actually create a weaving or a vine type that goes through there. Now, that's a pretty um, fun thing to do and I want you, want you to see how easy that is to do. So what I've done here in this particular block is I've just found my center. And um, I have a ruler that I use because you can see here this one is not long enough. And so I use a ruler that I have that's my border centering ruler and it really works well. So all I did was cross it that way and this way simply to find my center. Now what I'm gonna use today is a six point crosshair grid and that comes in the regular eight and a half or it also comes in the smaller size. And so I guess I pulled out the wrong one. This is what I've done to mine so I can tell which ones they are. It says it up here in the corner, but it's so much easier if I've got one here. So there's my six, there's my five, and my eight is the one I started to pick up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this in the center and I want this so that they go this way, side to side. Let's see, yeah. I want it to go so it's side to side. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center that right on that spot. And I'm gonna take, I've already treated my fabric with Best Press or Starch Savvy. Actually, I use Starch Savvy. And I am making the lines that I need to do my design. Now you'll notice these are just there. That was to find my center point. These are the four or six that I'm going to use. So at this point, I'm, you could use anything you want. I'm deciding that I'm using my Spinifex 4. And so I'm gonna take this and I'm going to find my center. I'm gonna shut my speed a little bit slower because I had it up to, I was constructing before. And so I'm finding that center, I'm dropping my needle down in, bringing it back up, pulling up that thread, raise the foot, and then I floss underneath there. Now again, if you can't get that, just use some curved tweezers and pull that out so you've got control. I'm gonna set this back down and needles going right back down in that spot. So when I come down here, you don't see a line to line up. I'm going over here. Now that little ruler or that little crosshair grid didn't make the line clear out, but I can tell that that's straight. So I'm gonna come around and back to the center. This does happen to be a variegated thread
And each time I'm lining that line up, with the line on my template. I guess Brenda said my nails look great. Thank you, Brenda. They were really bad. But they were really good for actually 10 weeks. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna raise up my needle, or excuse me, my yeah, my needle and I'm gonna pull this out, and later I will go ahead and secure this. So I'm just gonna make sure I leave my thread long. Questions? Yes, we have a question from Peggy on this. Could you use the 8.5 grid for these small blocks? Oh yes, yeah, it would still fit in there. And I'm gonna have you turn my iron on over there because I do wanna take these lines out here in just a minute. While she's doing that, I will go ahead and show you how to secure this thread. This will be the only one I'll probably do. And what I'm using is my cinch needle. And these are the cinch needles here. I actually cleaned everything up last night and I put away the needle. I usually leave it out. And I'm gonna take these threads to the back. by loading them into the side of the needle. That's why it says side threading needle. So I don't really have to thread a needle. I'm taking this to the back. Uh-oh. I got one that didn't go. Oh, I guess it actually did. I could have just uh, gone ahead and pulled that through. When that happens, make sure you pull it back and then go back in because otherwise you'll be in two different spots and you'll get a little loop underneath there. Ask me how I know. And so you can see now I've got all of those to the back so I'm gonna flip this over and I'm using a brown on the back of this, just a solid brown. And so now I have all of these threads to the back I don't need that much, so I'm gonna cut it so it's only like six inches long. I'm gonna make a loop, and I'm simply going to put my needle down in the center. I don't want it to actually go to the center. You can see it's a distance away, and now I'm gonna secure those threads. I know many of you have seen this many times because I've done it many times, but we always have new people who haven't seen it. And so now I'm going to hide this thread underneath between my fabric and my batting. I don't want that to come out, so I'm holding on. And so now all I have to do is pop that in there. And so I now have that thread buried. I always give this a little bit of a pull so that I can cut those off and they will then be underneath. So now I have done one of those blocks. I'm, I'm going to pull it out. Sounds like we might have a question. Those squares, they're six inches before construction, correct? The question was how big were the squares? They're six inches before construction. Your measurements down here tell you your preparation needed for the project. You need four six inch squares. You need 20 three and a quarter inch squares to make these four patches. Now I have to tell you, this is a cheater fabric here. This was one that I just fussy cut, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna quilt that. You will notice that you need three quarters of a yard for your backing and your borders, and you'll be able to get your borders and your backing out of that. So that's the, the requirements for that. And again, I do recommend that you use 60 or 80 weight thread to piece because here between I don't have hardly any ridge at all. I'm gonna be able to quilt right over that. I don't need to be able to quilt right over this because the design I'm gonna use is not gonna go from border to the inside of the quilt. 
This is one of the threads that I really like. This is a 60 weight from Quilter Select. It's called Perfect Cotton Plus. It's a nice weight, a nice strength, and it, it really is a thread that I'm really liking. Okay, so back to our quilting. We have options, and the reason I chose to go ahead and show some of this today is because I'm finding that a lot of people, this is where they get frustrated. They get a project put together, and then they don't know what to do with it. So we could actually just go ahead and do the in-the-ditch quilting here. And then honestly, our minis would fit in here. We could do the minis, in other words, the small of the minis because there are two sizes. So on those minis, I'll put it over here. You can see here's the smallest and then here's the bigger one. The bigger one is gonna come right to the edges, which would be okay, because I have tested this out, but I think the smaller ones might be what you like in there. Or you could do corner to corner on this. And if you did that, which is what I'm gonna show you on this one over here, um, we are going to be able to go from the top corner clear down to the bottom corner and then we can go on the other direction all the way and then all we'll have to do is come back in these corner ones and go one more time because your center one will get completely crossed. Now I could also do an edge stitch around this of some kind. I could use my scallop stitch. There's all kinds of things that we can do for this and I'll show you some of those if we have time because my main thing is I want to teach you out here in the border. So what I want to do with this one is I'm going to get my little pressing mat that I can slip right underneath. And this is what I'm using right here. It's a pressing mat that has a cutting board on the other side. And I can slip that right under there so I can press these lines off so that you can see what that looks like. And so with that variegated thread, that's what we have as far as our design. Now, I just chose to use a six point. You could have used an eight point. You could have done whatever you wanted to do there. With your thread, um, Jay is trying to find um, that QS thread and cannot find it anywhere. Any ideas where they could find it? Well, I want to tell you, check with your local quilt store. That's my first thrust. And then... Um, ours just came in, so if you can't find it there, it will be available on our website. That's my personal website, um, sobizmarion.com. Now I'm going to do another one of these because we might have had some people joining us a little late. And I want you to see, we don't even need that, we just need the center here. And then all I'm going to use is my six point. I lay it in the middle. And remember, you want to look to see, did these go across, you know, because this six point is going to be different. And in this case, up and down is the same way. Now, if it doesn't matter to you, that's not a problem. But I really kind of want to keep mine going the same way. And so I want to check on that. And anytime I'm doing something, well, I guess I should draw all the lines. That would be a good idea. Anytime I'm doing something like that, if there's lines I'm not using, just make sure you get them out of the way or mark them off. And because I've treated that fabric, it's going to make absolutely no difference. So again, I'm using my Spinifex 4 template. This comes with your sampler set. Foot down. Line everything up. Needle down. Needle up, foot up. Now, if you're still having, um, you're just getting started with this and you've never really done any of the template quilting, go back and check out our Let's Get Started. That was like way back in March. It's hard to believe it's almost June, but that was way back in March. And it will tell you how to do your feet to get them set on there correctly, how to test your height, working with anything that gets you going. Because I always say, once you've got your machine cooperating with you, the rest is just fun. And that is absolutely true. Because if you're fighting something on your machine, once you get that nailed down, you're just gonna have a lot of fun. Now, some of you probably noticed that my template 
is actually longer than my line, but I can see, because I'm moving around, you can probably tell by my voice that I'm not in the same spot. I'm moving my head to make sure that I get my template lined up. There's been some questions on what the pen is that you used. The marking pen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that is a Frixon marker. And that Frixon marker is not designed for fabric. I'm gonna just say that. And it is the one that's just called the marker. Now I have fine line and the fine line are what I normally use, but when I'm teaching, I want you to be able to see it. This is the fine line marker and I'll just go ahead and mark a line and you can see it's very fine, but it's harder for you out there to see that. So that is called a Frixon marker, and the way that I prepare my fabric is shown on my um, Facebook page, All Things Quilting and Sewing with Donnell McAdams. There is a six and a half minute video on there that tells you how to do this. But I have prepped my fabric before I started with Quilter's Starch Savvy. And you can use Best Press, you can use anything that's gonna put a barrier. But this one, you can use it right out of the spray bottle. If you're using Best Press, you're gonna to wanna to put it in one of the Mr. Bottles so that you can then get a fine mist. And this is what the Mr. Bottles look like. So Best Press in this. It also allows your Best Press to last a third of the time longer, but it gives you coverage that's better because it's a fine mist. Now I haven't finished this off yet, but what I want to explain to you is once I put that spray on there, I press it dry. Then I put another layer of the spray and press it dry. And so then after that, I can just mark off all of those lines. Now in the little video clip, we actually put the, the whole piece of fabric that we were working with, we put it in the freezer for 15 minutes. Now we don't make you wait the 15 minutes. We cut the video and put it in there and brought it back out to show you that the piece that didn't have the best press on it, the lines did come back, but the piece that had the best press or did not come back. So you can hop on over there after this class and you can see um, a little bit of information on that. So this is how I'm going to be doing my um, four blocks that are solid. I haven't decided, I may come back in and put a little bit more in the corner here. There's all kinds of things that you can do, but I wanna show you what we're going to do to create our border here. So any more questions before we start that? We do have one on the thread again. Um, a lot of them are asking if they could use 50 weight air fill or Mettler thread. So what are your thoughts on that? It's okay, but it doesn't, it doesn't give you the smoothness here to get over your seams. Now, if you're not stitching over the seams, it won't matter. But like in this case, I could even take, and I'll just do this because it's gonna be something that's gonna look okay and I'll work with it later. So I'm gonna take my two inch circle. It's right there. I'm just gonna take my two inch circle that I have and I'm going to make a couple of marks here so that I know I've got it straight in there. And you're probably wondering how in the world is that gonna work? Well, trust me, it will. I should have got my eight. Did I what? Did you need another line there? I should have got my eight, oh, so okay. I'm getting my eight. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting my eight instead of my six. I've got these two, those are the same. I'm not using this, 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 or this. And trust me, ladies, that's exactly what I do is if I'm not using something and I wanna get it off of there, I just do it like that. So what I'm doing is I have etchings on my ruler that are right here. I think you can see them, right there's etchings. And I'm lining those up and there's an etching right there. I'm moving it over and I can't see through this, but I've got a line right here that I can see that you probably can't see on the tape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set my foot down. And I'm gonna come to this point right here. 
Needle down, needle up, foot up. Sounds like a square dance routine. I flossed underneath there. I got my thread. Well, tweezers. There they are. They're so handy I couldn't find them. So there's where I'm pulling this out, putting my foot back down. And now I'm just simply going to go around in each of those corners. Now you will notice that I did not have any hesitation when I got to those four seams. That's why I recommend the 60 weight thread. Now, there's not anything wrong with you trying the 40 weight. Certainly that's not gonna be, you know, a big issue. But um, I can tell you that I know that that 60 weight does make a big difference. Needle up, foot up, pull this out. And I'll go underneath here, cut my thread. I'm gonna bring this back. And just because I know it always makes it look better, let's get that iron and iron those lines out, actually press. And there you go. So something as simple as a circle in that corner is gonna give some definition. Oh, I gotta push it up farther, I guess. There we go. Something as simple in that corner is going to give that, you know, some definition there. And we can still, there's so many more things we could do. We could come back with our mini and put something in the, each of these. And I don't know a lot of times where I'm headed when I'm doing it. And trust me, um, you're going to find yourself the same way. All right. So when you get your piece pieced together, your, your quilt block here, I think you can see pretty much end to end. What you want to do is measure the inside. So I'm going to try and find my handout. And we're going to look at this first bit of information. Now, I put the basics on here. I didn't fill in all of the blanks and all of that stuff because this is a demonstration. This is not actually a class. I do plan to teach how to work with borders um, in the university on So Steady's site. And this may be one of the classes that we actually dive into and do together. I don't know. But what you need to do is you need to measure the inside border measurement. Now this one is a square but never trust that. You always wanna know what your sides are and what your top and bottom is. So I'm gonna tell you on this one that my sides are 16 and a quarter. So I'm gonna put 16.25 and top and bottom sides are 16.25. And then that gets divided to find the center. So each of those side centers are eight and an eighth inch. So, and this was a quarter, so I'm just gonna put eight and an eighth like that, and eight and an eighth. And right now you're going, okay, Donnell, that is way too much math. No, don't worry about it. It's all gonna come together. And I will tell you, this ruler makes it so much easier because you've got a centering point that you can work off of to do some of that thinking for you. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with our templates on paper. So what I did is I got out my drawing pad. So I have a drawing pad that you can get if you want. It doesn't matter how you do it. I just have the drawing pad has marked off, um, half of the sheets are with eight inch or eight point marks. And then the other half is just plain. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and lift that presser foot a bit so I can put it under there so you can see most of it. And I'm going to show you how I started with this. Now it's not the instructions down here yet, but this is what I started with. I knew that I had two inches of border space to sew in. My border is actually wider than that, but that's what my finished border is going to be. So you might want to make a note, you know, in this case, this finished border is going to be equal to two inches. So when I drew this out, I just took my ruler and I drew two inches. 
So this ruler happens to be two inches, so all I had to do was draw either side and then move it over and measure, and the dashed line is my center. So that's how I set it up to begin with. So I could play, okay? What I showed you are more finished templates. So if you wanna hand me my play templates down there, this is what I was playing with. So I started out with this one thinking that I was going to use the larger of the mini template. Well, it ended up being way too big. I couldn't fit that in there. So then I went to this side. So this is actually two inches, and I started playing with that template. So the first one that I'm working with is this one that goes back and forth like that. So when you look at your handout, you're seeing the starting of actually where I finished playing. So I knew that this particular design right here, from this to this point, it ends up that it is three and three-fourths inches in reality. So if that's three and three-fourths in inches, that's my center here. So what I did from there is the measurement I had in number one, mine's the same, yours could be different. Now, if this was only a quarter of an inch different, I'd just work with it and I'll show you how to do that. But uh, if this was a quilt that was longer on the sides than it is across the top and the bottom, these would have to be figured separately. But when I did this, I divided three and three-fourths inches into 16 and a quarter inches, and I got 4.3333333 until I don't know how many threes were on that calculator. So I'm saying there was a room for four of these sections across my quilt, my border side of my quilt. So knowing that, then I simply took my fabric, or my, excuse me, my paper, and started out drawing. So here's what I had. The first picture you see is this right here. I hope I'm in the screen, I think I am. That's this from there to there. So from this middle line over here on the side, this is my middle. Remember I asked you to you know, measure to the middle. So this is one repeat. And if I put this down here and I put this on number one, this comes up to three and three fourths. And that's how I got that measurement. So how I draw it is I put my template, got to get my cross or my little um, stitching line disc. These are stitching line disc. I don't know how I ever lived without them. They come four in a bag, and they come two to each size. So let me see. This is the one that I know works for me, and I like to use my orange pen that has my little spongy piece on the end. So I'm going to take this, and the reason I say that is this little tip right there comes out, and then it hooks right down into my pen. Now I know that that one's too big. I'm gonna test this. There we go, I thought that's the one I needed. So what I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna show you how I take that template. We're gonna start over here. And the reason we use this is this is the size of our foot. So I started right there in that crosshair and I drew from there to there. I spun this around holding my template, uh, my st stitching line disc and my pen in place. I lined it up as if I was gonna stitch. There's a line here and a line here. And I went that direction. I spun it around again and I went this direction. So you can see as I'm working my way across I am eventually going to get down here to my corner. And so when I get to that corner, you will notice that right there, I want my point of my thread or my pen 
to end up right in that spot. And you can tell it's not going to. I'm on page three at the top left. So what am I gonna do? I am going to draw until my stitching line disc gets right here, and I would sew the same way. So when it gets to that point, I am gonna leave my needle in place when I'm sewing, my ink pen in place when I'm working with my um, templates just on paper. And then what I did was I moved this using my spacing gauge just an additional quarter of an inch and finish that. Now when that gets finished, I don't think any of you could tell that there's an extra quarter of an inch between that point and this point and you certainly won't be able to see it when you're stitching. So that's how I made it come to exactly where I want it. So when I'm actually looking at the finished project, here it is right here. I had drawn my center lines in each way. I came to this point, and then that is where I moved it over so I would finish there. When I stitch, I'm gonna do the same thing, and I'm gonna show you how that works because it is a little bit different. So here's where we left off. That's on page three. I'm gonna take page four, and we'll set it in here. And you noticed I changed directions on my template. So now I'm in the same spot. I'm going to stitch up to this line, just like I did when I was coming this way. And what I'm going to be doing when I stitch to that line, I am going to be adding a quarter of an inch. So what I did before I really stitched this is I came down here and I moved it so that that was a quarter of an inch. That's what I'm showing you there. And so I moved it and made another point. So now let's go to the stitching of that. We're starting here. We're coming to this line and stopping. We're coming to the next page. Our template was right here. I moved it up so that the template end, this is my first spot, the template end is in line there. And then I go ahead and finish so that that is going to now be the same size as this one over here. And when I continue on, I have my middle here. And this edge right over here is my middle. And so you can see how I got this little wavy line that has something in the corner. You could add more out here if you wanted to later. And we're going to go ahead and then this edge over here was the middle. So I have middle, middle. So basically I'm going to be doing this four times. So when it was finished, it ends up looking like this because I'm going to use my smallest and my six point crosshair grid and I'm going to add these little flowers right in that section. I really like it. I hope you like it. And we're going to go ahead and stitch it and mark it and do everything on real fabric so that you can see what's going on. I just lost my spacing gauge. There we go, or my stitching line disc. There we go. Okay, so here we go. Now, I think you'll be able to see this with the brown. If not, I'll try to find a black. But what I'm gonna do is I'm taking a straight edge and I'm going to mark this corner, can they see that? Give me a thumbs up out there. I think I'm going for my black. While she's rearranging the camera, I'm gonna show you my new box that I got. I know Linda's waiting on this. I finally have them, Linda. They're supposed to be delivered on Tuesday. We're gonna hold our fingers crossed on that. It's taken a while to get that settled. I'll show you the box here later, but I need to find my black marker. Guess it didn't make the trip.
there we go you can see that you never know what color is going to be the one that shows up best this actually has a seam in it but I hardly can see that seam so when I'm doing this I go ahead and mark right over that because you want to be able to see what you're doing there I'm going to come down I'm going to mark the center here and I can go right off of this mark And I'm going to concentrate on just doing a quarter of this for you. So I'm going to only mark this quarter. And so now I need to know it's where it's one inch is. So I'm just going to lay my ruler there and come down my one inch. I could also use chalk on this dark. Let's see if that makes it easier for you all to see. My chalk iron's off too. So I'm going to take this and line it up. And I'm going to line it up this way. As you can see, I've got my center right over there. I'm coming through the center here and I'm coming down here. So now the block, or my, excuse me, my border, this is actually how wide I have to work with. That's what my plan is. That's what I'm working off of. I'm going to go ahead and come around this corner so I've got enough lines that I can be accurate. They are really liking that centering ruler that you're using. It really helps for a lot of reasons. I haven't even used it for what I designed it, but you'll notice that I have a zero here and I can measure out each way and it does make it a lot easier. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna finish this line and I'm gonna do this one for you here. Now I know you can see everything on my fabric. Whoop, that went uphill a little bit. And this does iron off too. All right, so we are going to begin again with the same template, the Spinifex 4 that I used over here. And I've decided that I want it to come out and up like this. Now, I can have it come out this way and on this side do the same thing. So that way I would have something different in the middle working out to the outsides. Again, it's something I will play with on paper before I actually decide which way I'm going to do it. So I need to get my spacing gauge. And I'm gonna set this right down in the middle here. And I'm putting my needle down, pulling the thread up. Needle is up and fleece or fleece, floss right behind there. So I'm going to go ahead and put my foot back down in place, needle in the center, and make sure it's right where it's supposed to be. Because I can tell you right now, mine is not. So I want to get it right where it's supposed to be, because you want this to be accurate. So now that I've got that in place, I'm going to just take the time to pull my threads underneath my template and tell them, stay down here. I don't want to see you until I'm finished. And Norma wants to know, this template you're using right now, is that the regular size or the mini? This is the regular size. This is the spin effects number four that is in the sampler set. Its actual measurement is three and a half inches. So I'm lined up on my line here. I'm going to stitch up, come to the center, rotate around with my needle down, line up. And this time I'm coming down. Now, I'm going to show you something because this would probably just throw you into left field. Um, you would probably just go crazy. But if we look back at my designs, the one that's totally finished, we worked, this would be the center working out. So I have done one of these, and now 
I'm simply going to open up my little gate here and I'm going to get my mini and that's going to go in here so I could actually do this right now and this is why it's a good thing to be able to measure down here it would be three and three quarters of an inch because I could have already marked that. Now, since I haven't marked it, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to mark the next one so I can show you how I can do these without having to stop and come back. So what I'm going to do here is my three and three quarters is right here. Measure, I, I double check. I want my picture back. Thank you. I'm always one that double checks to make sure I've got that right. Yes. So there's my center. I'm moving down to mark my three and three quarters. And now what I'm going to do is take my six point cross hair mini grid. And I am doing these so that the lines are on the center. I'll have to come back and do that other one because I didn't mark it. So I've got that marked now. So I'm going to go ahead and skip this one because I didn't mark it. That's my fault. And now I just did this, so I'm spinning, and this time I was down before, I'm going up, spinning it, and look there, I'm going to get right back to where I intended to. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to put my mini in, I'm going to come down, I'm going to do this design. There's one on the line here. You'll have to trust me because I know you can't see it back there. This template is the mini. This is the mini, and it's not only the mini, it's the mini mini. I know that doesn't make any sense. Now, some of you probably caught it. There's my line. I'm only using it as a reference of direction because I came just a little bit short of it, but you'll see that it's going to work just fine. So I'm taking that, taking that out of there, getting my four inch back, and this is the one that's going to be different. Now we're going to be repeating this all again, so don't get panicked, okay? So now, this one was down, this one's going to go up. So I'm going to draw or stitch this around to, uh-oh, I forgot. I can't believe I did that. Well, we'll take it out, but what we need to do is come right to there and stop. Right to there where that line is. And then we're going to be moving this so there is an additional quarter of an inch right here. So you can see that's not the center. I want to move that so there's that additional quarter of an inch. I'll take those stitches out. And now I'm right where I need to be when I turn. So I'm turning this. I've got too much stuff on my table here. And so now I want this to be the hump that goes up. And remember, I'm going to put a dot right here. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to take that template and put a dot here, because this is the one that I really need, because that's where I need to move it to. And since I don't want to forget this time, I'm going to get my three. From that dot right there, I need to get my three, one, two, three, 
and I'm going to go just a bit shy because that other one was a little long. And then I'll come over to here and that should be, oh, there we go. Okay, so it looks like we're going to be okay. So what I'm going to do is bravely put this down on there. And this one wouldn't have one this one would so I don't know that I can take this out but we're gonna try it did I get the right die yeah okay wish me luck so now I'm going back in with this template. You could do all of this one first and then go back and fill in the other one. I need to stop right at that line, which is what I did not do the first time around. So I'm coming here and stopping. I'm simply moving it up to that line there. And I can see that I've drawn that in the wrong place. So I'm gonna be doing the same thing again so taking this template out I can still do it and like I said I'm gonna do another so here's what I'm looking at see that right there rather than this being over there they're equal distance apart and this happens several times when you're doing some of this stuff when I iron this off, you'll be okay with it. And before I go to the next one, I will fix it. if you do have a mistake in the middle of your design How do you in the case that? of what I just did there that was all double stitch so I'll be able to rip that out and there should be enough threads that I can still take to the back and bury them now before I go any far oh Donnell oh it's there it's variegated thread I couldn't see it okay this being Yep, that needs to be in a different place. So let me have my iron again. I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to get my... I hope you, you understand that we make mistakes too. And knowing how to fix them is probably two-thirds of the information that you really need to know is how do I fix this situation. So I'm coming over here and this is going to go right there. Gloria would like to know, is that mini template part of the mini fills set? It's part of the mini fills, yes. It's number four, and there are four sets. So I actually have like, I think eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, four. I think there are 14 of them that I have. So I don't know what set number four is in, but you can see that on um, the Sew Steady site. All right, so now I'm here. I'm gonna take this out again so that you can see because I've got things straightened up now. This one came in this way. The next one's gonna go down. So I'm putting this back in and I'm going to go from the center and down. I'm turning this around. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together even after a couple of mistakes. And we're gonna go back into this spot. Too bad I didn't actually ma mark the marks I needed. Some of you are out there going, she didn't mark the marks. Where can I get that centering ruler? That centering ruler is a product of mine, so it would be available on my website. That's okay, they're all like in the you're human as well. So. Oh, today I'm really human. So I'm glad you're liking that, guys. 
so I can tell which way I need to go here. This is not the best of plans, but math was kind of my thing, so I know I can do this. All right. So now what we're going to do, the next one, I promise you, the next corner we do, we'll get this. So we're coming back in here. I'm just liking what I'm seeing because you guys can't see it all, but I can. And the next corner, I'm going to show you how I would recommend that you do it so that you don't get messed up like I just did. So back to center. On the side. And I don't know how many of you sew with several different sewing machines, but those of us that do, you kind of have to get used to your machine. Because, like, if you notice, you can't probably tell it, but when I take the foot control off, mine does like one more stitch. And it takes me a bit to get used to that because of the fact that if you don't, you're pulling at your, your um, fabric when your needle's still going up and down. So I got that one in there, and I'm not going to forget to mark this next one. So I'm going to come over here and get my chalk, and that's an eight. Woo, that would have been fun. Not. And so what I'm doing is side to side, working on that point, which is dead center. And so now I'm going to take my four, spin effects four, last one was up, so this one goes down, line it up here and here. Do you see what measuring did for us? It got us exactly where we need to be, even though you probably were worried about me because of all of the little flub ups I had. We got right back to center. So now I'm going to take off the other direction. I'm going to mark it first, and we'll just continue right around. I just got a really hard pull on a shoulder, you guys, because I almost did the wrong one. It would be nice if we had that all the time, huh, when you get ready to make a mistake. Line up. I will tell you that in the minis, this number four is probably the easiest one to do because there's not any little ridges or anything like that. And so it's kind of one that's good to start with. Here's a question from Linda. Could you use the one fourth inch echo guide on the number four spin effects to get that mini size if they don't have that template? You couldn't get this small. You could get something, but I will tell you it's squared off at the top. It won't be rounded. All right, so here we go. We're going to take our ruler. We're going to line it up. I'm going to turn it this way so that you can see. We're going to line this up, and we're going to draw as far as we can. right down this edge here. We're gonna come back to the middle. Remember, it's that three and three force. So I'm coming right down here. This is the three I'm looking at. This is the three force. I move that in here, and I'm coming down one, two, three, and there's my three force. So now, after I have stitched a little bit here, we'll be able to mark the rest of it. So, those of you that are out there that are with me as far as, oh, I don't want her to make another mistake, I'm getting it here right so that I can move over and have these in the right spot. Now, I might be out of your view, but we'll get it there in a second. So, Lillian asked, would you mark this all the way around or just do as your uh, mark as you go? I would mark it all the way around. 
Yeah, I just didn't know how much time we would have. Now here's where I want my corners to end up looking alike. So in the center here, this one was done coming in from the top. So I'm gonna come in from the top and go out that way so that when I get to the corner, I'll be able to do it the same way. So top and now bottom. Now here again, I need to be over there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come around part way and I'm just gonna scooch it to the side that little bit. That looked like I broke my thread and I did. So at least it's in a good spot. So I'm gonna raise this up raise my needle up and re-thread. Thank goodness it's right there in that center. Forgot to use my lock. This one has a lock when you thread it and it puts it exactly in the right spot. So now I'm done with this template. If I wanted to, I could go all the way around using this template and then go back and I think that's what I'm gonna do because for some of you, that's gonna be the easiest way to do this. So I'll show you both ways. So we're right here in the center now. And since I am in the center, I'm just gonna take my thread and go back just a little bit to kind of cover that up so that it's, or to stitch over it like back stitching, even though it's not. Now, I'm gonna be going this direction because this was an up. I've actually messed that up. I'm gonna come clear over to the other side. You ever have one of those days? See what I did here, ladies? I can't believe I did that. Well, I can, but not for you. I wanted to do it correctly. So I'm coming down here and I'm going to turn this ruler so I can put it right here on the two. And I'll tell you what, finding my chalk marker today has been a trip too. So there's my center. I said I mark these lines, and I do because I want to be able to see them. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to continue on because this is, I think, what Lillian asked. Would I mark the whole thing? Yeah. Sorry, guys. I really can't. talk and draw, I guess. But if you have questions, I'm here for you. So we're gonna go ahead and mark around this one. Again, you can see why this is making this easy. I'm gonna line it up here to get the middle. And I'm gonna get the middle here on this side. And in case we still have some time, we'll just continue because this is the fourth corner. I'm lining this up on that border. I'm doing the corner. Okay, your cheerleaders are still on here. They're they're still good. loving it. Good, good. They appreciate really love to that. see that you're human, and they really like to see how you are correcting mistakes. Okay, well that's great because I want I need my cheerleaders. So you can see I've got all of that marked. Now I'm going to have to come back, and what I will do, just so you know, I will take just this part right here out that will leave me a long enough thread that I can tie it there and bury it and continue on this way. Now the only reason I'm not doing that right now is I don't wanna take that time to pull that one out. But you can see how this is working out and what it's looking like over here. So you can see that. So let me just, while we're here at this corner, cause I'm gonna do this a little different the next time. You wanna hand me that. I'm gonna take this and this side here is good. So now, let 
The rest of it I don't want to mark out because that's where my mistakes are. So there you can see that cute little border that's in proportion with the space that it's in. So right there's what we've got. So I'm going to come down to this point right here. And I need to measure from the center of this side back three and a quarter inches. So here we go. I'm going to put it like this because it makes it a little easier to see the zero. And I'm coming back three and three quarters. Laura wants to know if this is a cordless mini iron. It is not. No, it's not. You tell her what it is. It's the steam fast. It does steam. You want to hold it under here so they can see it. It's the steam fast iron. It can have water put in it. It steams. The bottom of it looks like this. I don't have any steam in it right now, but you do have a little button there you can press if you're wanting steam. The beauty of this is that I can use my silicone pad on my wool pressing mat and leave it all day if I want on, and it never shuts off. So that's why I am really partial to that little iron. All right. Now, this is the one that's a little funky here in the corner, okay? So if we look back at our picture that we've drawn, and trust me, I always reference it, I know I want to have my needle there, but I have got to move it that extra bit to get to this right measurement here. So I'm going to take this and lay it on there. I'm going to move over to this spot and lay it on there, even though I'm not going to use these this time because I told you I'm just going to do the curly Q deal. And we'll go around that way and then come back and put them in. So here in the corner, I'm going to start with my needle right in that spot right there, up, foot up and pull that out. Carla would like to know when you're done with this, do you plan on bringing the back to the front or add on binding? I am bringing the back to the front. I have a tool called the Quick Easy Miter Binding Tool and I will be bringing, I will cut my batting off next to the edge. I have left three quarters of an inch and I will leave this longer and um, bring it from the back to the front with the Quick Easy Miter Binding Tool. Now, right now, you can see I'm not going to line up with the center there. So that's why I'm going to stop right here. That's that corner. And I'm going to be moving it from there over a quarter of an inch. But here's what I got to do that I didn't do the one time, which caused a problem. I need to pull my template in to touch and then just rotate it a little bit. So I've got my quarter there and my quarter here, and I'm going to take this and check it. I need to pull it back just a smidge. And so now I will get a smooth line to that point, okay? Now, I'm not gonna stop and do the other one. I'm gonna turn this and I'm going to go down this time and up, rotate this around and see how this lines right up with where it's supposed to. Some of you probably are thinking, I don't know how she's figuring that measurement. Well, it's all on what the first part of that was based on and that's finding out exactly how many patterns you can do in there. And so I'm lining this one up this one went up, so I'm going down. This one went down, so I'm going up. Now, I'm not quite where I want to be again, so I'm going to go over and go part way and then just scooch that over and finish it up, and it will be fine. Now, the one going this direction, I haven't done my measurements yet. 
But I'm going to just set this up so that you can see me do that. And I'm going to take that tool, put it on my zero, measure over my three and three quarters, because here's zero, three and three quarters. Move that over three. And three, I hope we didn't lose you. My phone was supposed to have notifications off. Is everybody still out there with me? Are we still there, ladies? They're, they're there. We're okay, there. Good, good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to this time, remember, this one came in. So I'm going to make it so this one goes up. I turn it around and this one's going to go down. This one's going to go up and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. Since that didn't measure up, say la vie. And we're gonna go down this time. We're gonna forget about those. And we're gonna follow my instincts because this is right where it was planned. I'm gonna have I'm gonna move over my quarter of an inch, measure it with my spade, and I'm gonna come to that point. I'm gonna turn. And this time, I mean, now there to make that little edge slide, but remember, we've got to go halfway. We can move just a little bit. That's where one up is going to be. And this time, is going to go down. This one is going to go up, and you probably see how much easier this is to keep on your brain working right, just doing one part of a time, because obviously it's easier for me. And so now I'm going to go this way. And you see I'm a little off here, so just go halfway and just kind of move it forward. Nobody's going to know the difference. This one we do the top again because this was the middle. So we're going to do the top. We're going to come back around and we're going to do the bottom. We're going to forget about those marks that we put on there because obviously, whoops, I almost did the wrong thing again. We're flipping it around. We're coming down. And this is the one that we're going to stop here. So we're going to come up. And this happens all the time, you guys, so don't panic. It's just that you're, you're using your t the knowledge that you have regarding your templates to make them work for you. And I'm going to take this, and I only have just a little bit here to go back to the very beginning. Remember this one, we go to this point that's in your pictures. We move it a quarter of an inch and make sure our templates match up. And we're going to come to that line. This time it goes down. Next time it goes up. Down. And we are back to the beginning over here. And so there's our first one. 
And look at that. We're gonna come right back to where we want to be. This one is an up. That one is an up. That's what we want. I'm gonna raise my needle, raise my foot. And so now I'm gonna just cut this thread and you can see how we have got our chain going around there. And now it's easier to go back and just take this and put them where we need them because they're gonna be exact. And there has been questions about what that marker that you're using is. This is a Clover Chaco pen because it is a dolphin tip that fits right down in here and I have emptied it out and refilled it with pounce iron off chalk and we've had the other question about what your pink tape is my pink tape is the um, um, RNK Embroidery Perfection Tape. It doesn't leave a residue, and it's going to be able to be pulled off and I'm back on many, many times. Now what I'm doing right here is, this is where I need my marks, and I had pre-marked and they're not in the right space. So that's the beauty of being able to just mark those right off of there. And I'm gonna come right back in here and mark these in the right place. Why it was off, I really don't know. But you know what? You just mark it out and go again. This one's in the right place. That one's in the right place, as is this one. So now all I need to do is take my mini mini. And I'm going to come back in around my needle. Make sure I don't catch my thread. And I'm going to put my needle down here. Get my thread. And since I cut it the time before, I can pull that right out. Put my foot back down in that spot. And remember, you need to know which lines you're actually stitching on because you might have some lines that are in there that are not stitching lines. And I also want to encourage you not to be afraid of variegated thread. Now this one is a wonderful thread that I'm using right now. It's a variegated um, in browns. I just caught my tail on my template there. I got to get that out of the way. And it is a, I want to say it's a 40 weight thread. So now I'm back in that center and I'm going to raise my needle up and show you what I've got there. So you can see that once we take these tails and tie them. I'm going to lift it up closer so they can see. Um, I pushed a bunch of buttons. I don't even know what I've pushed. There we go. There we go. Just forgot I'd used that presser foot a while ago. Okay. They really like this border with the cute little flowers. So now we are at the next one. Again, you could use some of the other templates. I kind of like a little bit of consistency, so that's why I'm using the same one. And as I said, this happens to be one that um, 
is rather easy to use because it doesn't have any of those little extra curls in it and whatever. So Linda wonders, could you mark the flowers first and then switch to the um, the vine motif? I wouldn't. That's hard. Probably do the vine first and then the flowers. As you can see, it was easier not to even try to rethink that. I got a thread here that's gonna be all tangled up if I don't get it out of there. So let's get it out of there. Always have your machine set for the needle down so that it holds you in place. In between each of your flowers, the question has come, do you cut the thread? I am not tying anything yet. You can see here on my first one that I did, here's my thread that needs to be tied. So what I'm doing right now is I'm lifting my foot, I'm pulling out my thread, I'm leaving as much as I'm leaving on my, my template or on my design so that I can do that. I'm actually reaching to the back and cutting that too so that I'll have my threads to work with. So let's do two more here and so you can see what we've got going on. Kind of excited about this one. I uh, probably will hang around here and finish it. So around, oops, I forgot to pull it up. That's okay, it's still on the back. Well, well, well. So it may be time to change my needles. So let me talk about needles for a second while I'm doing this. And I'm going to get a new needle. And I have them right here, Megan. <clears throat> That's what you're going for. This particular brand, I'm using a Janome and I am using a purple tip needle. And any brand can use that. And what happens with your needles is the inside top of the opening, the hole in other words, where you thread it, that gets damaged. Megan went to get me my nice, what am I taking my foot off? You guys, this is really, is it Friday the 13th or is it a full moon? What's the deal with Donnell? She went to get me my big needle so I can actually show you. So if you wanna put it underneath there so they can see it. So there's my nice big needle. And you can see this opening here. This is the front, so this is the groove. So as that thread comes down that groove, when it turns to go through there, after a while, this right here, this area gets all sharpened up from the thread going through there and it shreds your thread. Now, I'm not having any thread shredding, but I have had it break twice, and so for me, that's like, okay, that's it. I'm getting it, you know, I'm getting the needle changed. So I'm changing the needle, and the thing you want to remember is, because we had this on one of the, I think it was on Westerly the other day, a lady was having problems hearing a tick, 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 and what had happened was she had not gotten her needle up high enough so when you do that, make sure you unthread or unscrew that needle screw far enough so that you will get it so that you can get the needle up in there high enough. Now fortunately, mine broke right there in the center. So I'm just going to be able to start right back in that center there. Needle down. Foot down. And I'm just going to take a couple of stitches. Oh, Donnell. So I guess I must have used the cutter. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that one out. Yep, it's too short of a thread. We should be good now. Okay. What happened is I had used the cutter before 
And so there wasn't enough thread there for me to just start without pulling it up, which sometimes there isn't. So just when that happens to you, just go back and pull the thread so you have them both on top. If I was trying out for being a teacher, today would not be my best, but it happens to us all. Giving it one more time, and then we're going to say, hmm, that's it. Just checking to make sure there wasn't anything wrong in the bobbin. You'll notice I just pulled my grid glider back, and so far, not the whole distance. Make sure no threads are caught underneath there. So ladies, I just found out what the issue was. It had jumped out of the take-up lever. So we have thread that wasn't in the take-up lever. So that's the problem. And this one is the thread from nowhere. While you're working to fix that, someone would like to know, again, <clears throat> what you're planning on doing in the blocks. I don't know if that's something you want to share. I'm going to um, talk about that in just a moment, but right now I kind of have to get my problem solved right here. So let me just get this issue underway and we'll see what we can do. Okay, I think it's going to sound a lot better now. There we go. So to answer your question on that, I am going to um, be doing the spin effects four in the larger size. So I'm going to pull this back around so you can see the corner that I have done. You can see how that is going to look here, except for those little stitches right there that have to be removed. I'll finish this up and get back so you can actually see it. This is a six point here of the Spinifex 4. I have put a circle in this part right here. And I'll go ahead and finish this and I'll put a picture up later this evening so that you can see it. I will tell you, I can't post to those other pages, so I'll probably, it'll be on West, well, I can comment on there, so I'll, I'll be able to do that. So it'll be on Westerly by me and on So Steady. But you can see what I've done here is the two inch circle. I have done a six point large regular uh, spin effects four. And I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna do here. 
Um, so we'll, we'll kind of be waiting to see what we come up with. So any other questions? I apologize for all of the issues and the mistakes. Um, sometimes you just have those days, I guess. I'm sorry that it happened today, but it's all things that we can fix. Any questions? No questions, but they're all really proud of how hard you worked and they're excited to get I do want to show you this because this is something that I just got. And I know Mayor, um, I can't think. It's Linda, I think, is the one that's waiting on this. This is my new container that I got that has six compartments here in the middle. And I have room for all of my markers over here. I have my... Um, other things that are over on this side, again, this comes up, and underneath this side, I have my extra stable tape if I need that. And it all closes and it folds into or closes, and so if you turn it upside down, they don't move from bend to bend. And these will be available on my website also. Um, they are to come in next week. I've been looking long and hard for them and finally was able to get them ordered and come in. I don't know the price yet because I've got to see what it ends up with uh, the freight coming in so that we'll be able to give you a, I know it's less than $20. So this is a nice big box that holds all of my things that I use for when I'm working with my templates. So thanks again, ladies. Um, I'll see you next Saturday and hopefully um, we will have some better weather for everybody right now. It's pouring down rain here, and I know my husband and my son were out in the middle of mowing on that, so I don't know what it's doing in your neck of the woods, but things are opening up. Stay safe. Have fun. Template quilt on. Bye for now.